I now I'd like to turn to Mr. Forrest uh, Galante, who is the host on Animal Planet of Extinct or Alive. Welcome to the committee. Thank you very much. Chairman Barrasso, Ranking Member Carper, and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I'm a wildlife biologist and animal tracker. For as long as I can remember, I've looked for wildlife to experience seeing them in their natural habitats. I grew up on a farm in Zimbabwe. The land was home to flowers, fruits, livestock, and wild animals. As a boy, I enjoyed catching snakes, fishing in the dam, and exploring the remote African bush with my mother, one of Africa's first female safari guides and bush pilots. I was enthralled by all wildlife. I learned their behavior, how they survive and thrive, and what threatens them in their existence. From a young age, I knew I would pursue a career in wildlife. I'm honored to be here today to offer my perspective on human predator conflict and how traditional and innovative techniques can be used to reduce conflicts and benefit humans, wildlife, communities, and habitats. I applaud the committee's leadership role in establishing the five Theodore Roosevelt Genius Prizes. Now signed into law, this legislation encourages innovation to address growing challenges in protecting wildlife. I also applaud the committee for introducing new legislation, the Predators Act, to add a new award to incentivize solutions to reduce human predator conflict. Growing up in Africa, the conflict between predator and human is a daily struggle that I witness firsthand, from leopards stealing livestock to people actually being preyed upon by species like crocodiles, lions, and more. Unfortunately, in the long term, the predator almost always loses, as eradication has typically been the method of resolution. However, innovative methods of predator deterrence have begun to arise. These deterrents could easily become the new standard. They will not only resolve the issue, but support local economies by keeping the valuable apex predators in the system, which not only helps the biome, but supports ecotourism. Many of these methods are still in development and have typically been crudely implemented by scientists like myself attempting to resolve a problem with little resources. I want to emphasize that understanding animal behavior and the ecology of a species is essential to developing successful deterrents. The following is a list of non-lethal deterrents. Animatronic deterrents. In Malawi, there was an infamous hyena that used to raid village flocks. An engineer friend of mine came up with a fascinating animatronic decoy. Because hyenas fear large animals and men, he built a large motion-activated animatronic scarecrow to place at the entry points of the village. With solar panels to power them, they will scare away hyenas that come near. This is a permanent fix that requires a bit of engineering to be sustainably successful. Alarm systems. There are really two types, foreign and organic. A foreign alarm is a sound or light not recognized and startling to an animal, and an organic one is using something the animal is naturally deterred by, such as a competitor's growl. Setting these up via motion activation has proven successful for foxes, coyotes, leopards, and more. Olfactory deterrence. Like organic alarm systems, an organic smell can oftentimes be enough to deter a predator. For instance, if you have a persistent problem with a coyote, spraying wolf urine around the perimeter can deter the coyotes from entering the area. Commensalistic deterrence. In many cases, using an animal to deter another animal has no negative effects. This is simply the sheepdog approach. Living in Africa, we would see that train packs of Rhodesian Ridgeback dogs were a fantastic permanent solution to deterring lions. They stay close to home, create an alarm system, and will easily run off a lion that is trying to sneak in for a free meal. Barrier methods. In many places around the world, fresh water is the reason for predator-prey interactions. Using barriers to create safe swimming and washing areas and river systems can eliminate attacks by crocodiles, hippos, and other animals. The list goes on, but the key element here is fully understanding the predator which we are trying to deter. The point is true for predators in any habitat. There are several new pieces of technology that once properly understood and implemented will be the new standard. Before wrapping up, I'd like to share a few quick examples. The HEX technology is a passive technology that blocks the body's naturally occurring electrical energy basically by wearing a wetsuit that has the technology of a Faraday cage, the same thing that's in the door of your microwave oven at home, it blocks the body's naturally occurring electrical energy signal. To a shark, you are now perceived as an inanimate object. The shark shield is a lightweight wearable electronic device. The patented technology creates a powerful three-dimensional electrical field, which causes unbearable spasms in the shark's sensitive EMR receptors, turning sharks away as soon as they come into contact with the electrical field. The Clever Buoy is an ocean monitoring platform that specializes in detecting large marine life using sonar and identification software systems to relay critical information to authorities responsible for beach safety. Once technology like the Clever Buoy system is perfected, implemented, and combined with something like the Shark Shield, you have a virtual net that can make a beach safe for any swimmers, which is just amazing in my opinion. 
Uh, thank you again for inviting me to be a part of today's hearing. I look forward to answering any questions that you may have.